What's up guys, Leopold the Brave here, and this will be a fun topic to talk about. If you know me, you'd know that I do not like going for too long without making another video, and I have no other ideas for a video to make today, so I'm doing this. Now, I love cartoons. Many of you may already know this, including girlfriends who couldn't last more than a year. I got pretty close last time. Seven months is pretty good. Oh well, at least I'm better than those middle schoolers who break up after three months because they're not texting me enough. I'll find someone eventually though, and to any ladies who think I'd be a great idea, a fair warning, I show my geek a lot, and it smells like loser. But since I have no girl to love, I'll just love cartoons instead, which is what I'm doing. In fact, I'm a very huge fan of the animation industry as a whole. Voice acting, animating, storyboarding, it all interests me. And I've seen lots and lots of shows, maybe some you've never even heard of because they don't get enough attention. So that's what I'll be talking about today. The five underrated animations that I think deserve more attention. And these are animations, not just TV shows, they can be movies and anime too. So let's begin. Spot number five goes to the DreamWorks animated TV shows. You know, Kung Fu Panda, How to Train Your Dragon, and Penguins of Madagascar? Believe it or not, they were actually pretty good. They were actually pretty funny, and new characters they threw in didn't suck, and the animation was actually pretty good for CGI TV standards. Remember Fanboy and Chum Chum and how awful that looked? Ugh. These DreamWorks shows are like Walt Disney compared to that. And one of the best parts about these is that they could literally do whatever. Like in Penguins of Madagascar, they were still in the zoo, and they had the lemurs in the zoo too, even though they've never been there in the movies. And then they throw in this new otter character, some gorillas. Rest in pepperonis, Harambe. And surprisingly, none of these new characters fell flat. They all had their own personalities and they were legitimately funny. The same goes for the Kung Fu Panda TV series and the How to Train Your Dragon TV series, but my personal favorite of these three will always be the Penguins of Madagascar. And now for number four. Did you know there was a Lion King one and a half? I didn't. I knew there was a Lion King one and two, but one and a half? At first you might be thinking they're going a bit overboard with this, but it was surprisingly good. So it's basically the first movie from Timon and Puma's perspective. And from the Minions movie, we've all learned that side characters cannot carry a movie. But Timon and Puma do surprisingly well. They're very funny together like they are in the first movie. They actually get some very good development for Timon. And the entire thing takes place in a movie theater that Timon and Puma are visiting. They're watching the movie like in a movie theater, and sometimes they pause the movie and interrupt, and it's it's hilarious. I definitely recommend watching this movie if you haven't already. The animation quality is very, very good for a direct-to-DVD movie. <laughs> in fact, I'd say it's even theater quality. Number three, hey kids, do you like anime? Because there's an anime I like, but no one else seems to pay attention to. Sergeant Frog, and in fact it happens to be one of my most favorite animes of all time, right next to Naruto. If you like Panty and Stocking, you're guaranteed to like this show, because like Panty and Stocking, it works very well as an English dub, and it feels like it was made for the English dub. But unlike Panty and Stocking, it's legitimately funny. I mean, don't get me wrong, Panty and Stocking got some laughs out of me, but Panty and Stocking is more, haha, it's funny because it's dirty. But Sergeant Frog is, haha, Haha, it's funny because it's funny. You get what I'm saying, right? It's basically Japanese Invader Zim. A green alien comes to Earth to conquer it, but he's really bad at it. Each of the alien frogs have their own little personality and they play very well off each other. And all the human characters are very entertaining as well, unlike Invader Zim where Dib is there and no one else cares. It's filled to the brim with slapstick humor and references of all kinds. It's just a good show. You should really watch it. Number two is a very obscure show. It was on Cartoon Network in the early 2010s. It only lasted a season. And when they made it, someone said, Hey, what if we took regular show, put them in high school, and made them all robots that kill each other? I am not kidding. I present Robotomy. It really was like regular show. It was just normal high school robots doing normal things and then something crazy happens. Except those normal things at the beginning are like super demented versions of things that we do. Like they have social media networks that come to life and try and kill all your friends or something. They talk about special ed classes. <laughs> and they even had an episode centered around drug and steroid abuse. I'm not even kidding. Like all the cool dude robots are getting upgrades, which I guess is the robot form of puberty. And all the lady robots are interested, so they're like, hey, we should get upgrades too. So they like forced it by just getting an overload of upgrades and they were all out of it and drunk and high and or whatever. It was great. And since they were all robots, they could get away with brutally murdering a bunch of people on screen. It was definitely not a show for kids, and I loved it. I don't know where you can find it now, but maybe it's on Kiss Cartoon. I haven't checked yet. You should go check and watch it. It's amazing. 
Now, I've chosen a very special one for number one. I picked it because not only do a lot of people not notice it, but it also gets a lot of undeserved hatred for no reason. Number one is... Johnny Test! I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. It's not Johnny Test, not Johnny Test. It's total drama. Well, that's not much better, dipstick! No, 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 no. Hear me out, hear me out. There are three basic reasons why people hate this show. One, because it's cheap Canadian animation. Two, because all the characters are teen stereotypes. And three, because there's too many fart jokes. Let's debunk all three claims. The crew actually said this in a video. The characters are all designed awkward and weird shapes so you can tell who is who when they're all in a crowd or if only their silhouettes are showing since there's so many characters on screen at a time. They did a very good job at this. I can tell who is who just by looking at their silhouettes. And with the gigantic cast of characters throughout all the seasons, it's pretty incredible how they can come up with so many unique designs. Alright, claim number two. They're all annoying teen stereotypes. This is also false. While they may seem that way from their outward appearance, they are actually each individual complex characters. They spend the first few episodes of the season letting us get to know these characters, while also getting rid of the gag and joke characters that are only one-dimensional. Then they spend the rest of the season building up and developing the other characters that remain there. But of course, since it's called Total Drama, there is a lot of drama, and it actually feels pretty real and not super duper fake. The romances won't make you cringe, they have a very diverse cast of characters, and I guarantee that you will have a favorite picked out by the fifth episode. Now claim number three, they only do gross out humor and fart jokes, which is also false. The gross out jokes are few and far between. They only happen during eating challenges, which is only once a season, or whenever Owen's on screen, but you don't have to worry about that because in some seasons he gets eliminated pretty early. The rest of the humor is through slapstick and very well written character interactions. Like I said earlier, the characters are all written and developed very well and they have great chemistry with each other. It feels real. They did an excellent job capturing how it feels to be on a survival based reality show. So overall, I think it's a great show with great humor and characters, and I really hope the fandom for the show grows even more. Because right now, the fandom is small and dead. So I urge you to go on and give it a legitimate chance. I guarantee you'll have a favorite character by episode 5, and you'll be rooting for them all the way through to the end. Hopefully your favorite doesn't get eliminated. <laughs> and those were my top 5 underrated animations. What a fun video. Later, Gators!